So my father and my grandfather both played the piano. My grandfather grew up in the early part of the 20th century, so he learned a lot of Broadway standards, but also classical music, show tunes. So when I was growing up in my house, we had three kinds of music. We had like the sonatas and the Bach inventions that my dad would play on the piano. And we had like Rogers and Hammerstein songs that he would play. And then because my parents had gone to college in the late 50s, we also had like the Kingston Trio and the new Christy Minstrels and all that stuff. I was probably the only 13 year old in my, in my junior high who knew Charlie on the MTA. Which made me a freak because all my friends were trying to learn how to play Eruption. Anyway, one of the reasons my dad knew how to play that way was because when he was a teenager, they sent him off for um, a set of six popular piano lessons. And it was, the lessons were $12, no, it must, they must have been $10 a piece because the whole thing was 60 bucks and I think it lasted for six weeks. And at the end of it, according to my dad and my grandfather, the only thing that he had, the thing that they really felt like they'd gotten their money's worth was they had learned this chord, which they both hadn't known before and thought was super cool. So around the house, they used to call that the $60 chord. So then I went off to school and wound up through a, a very complicated path in the jazz department where I learned all of these kinds of chords that I'm playing right now. As Dave Van Ronk put it, I wanted to play jazz in the worst way and succeeded. But I did learn enough to write this song, which I like to refer to around the house as the $128,000 song. My health is slipping, but my heart is on the wing. My plans are bleeding, but I don't feel a thing. It's been like that lately since I met my baby at the laundromat of ill repute. We met one morning as I sorted out my brights. She offered me some Thunderbird and asked me for a light. Pretty unsanitary. Still, I found my sanctuary at the laundromat of ill repute. It's not a place you'd want to spend too much time. It's not in the best part of town. Even the criminals complain about the crime. But since I met my sweetheart, that's where I can be found. She makes me feel like I was 16 again. We just hold hands and watch the polyester spin. Out on the corner, folks are dealing dope. But inside, my heart is full of hope at the laundromat of ill repute. And I couldn't tell you what it was that made my heart jump like never before in my life. Could be the way she looks in black leather pumps. Maybe it's the way she can handle a knife. One day we'll buy ourselves a mansion on a hill and hang out laundry lines from every windowsill. Maybe take in a couple boarders just to keep ourselves in quarters for the laundromat of ill repute. Forget the personals, the cocktail parties, sounding clever, looking arty. Grab your dirty clothes and get down to the very worst part of town. Just one place without dispute for those who are in love's pursuit. The laundromat of ill repute.
are you doing with that dry 